everyone and welcome back to Mina Wonders. If it's your first time here, I'm Mina and this is a booktube channel. So today I'm going to be talking about a couple of books that I read in February. I decided to just kind of skip the month of January because honestly I didn't get a lot of reading done back in January. Most of it was for school and I was finishing things up for the term. So let's just fast forward and talk about books that I read in Fed. So the first book I want to talk about is Brown by Kevin Young. This is a collection of poems and the way that it's sort of structured is that there are two main parts, so field recordings and home recordings, and then that splits into two more sections or two more parts. And the thing that I will say about this poetry collection is that it's very well thought out. I think um, the structure is very good and there's a lot of tension in the images of these poems as well. They also do very well in talking about things that are important but maybe kind of uncomfortable to talk about like racism, violence, um, like this tension between the church a sense of belonging and also the different things that the church does wherein it kind of acts as a cloister for people who are young who are sort of different than everyone else and i think it kind of ticks all of the boxes when it comes to being a book that people should definitely check out and be interested in um that said i will say that experience wise this was not my favorite book um i feel like for projects that kind of do this thing where they projectize themselves. I feel like there are a lot of other poetry projects that are just a little bit more thrilling and a little bit more inventive with the chaos that they introduce into the work that's otherwise kind of ordered. So a good example of these poetry collections that I really enjoyed would be um, Don't Call Us Dead by Denez Smith, Soft Science by Franny Choi, and um, Night Sky with Exit Wounds by Ocean Vong. So yeah, if you were a fan of those, then you might like this, but you might also be craving some of that delicious lyricism. This is very lyrical, but there's just no moment in this where I was like, oh dang, like I cannot believe he used those words. So I'm just being nitpicky, but honestly, um, it was a very good book and definitely worth checking out if you're into poetry, if you're looking to read more work from people of color, then definitely give this a go. Out of 5 stars, I would probably give this 3.5 stars just because I feel like it's a sound project but just not exactly to my reading taste. Up next is a book that I was reading in the vlog that I posted a couple of days ago and that's Conversations with Friends by Sally Rooney. So I have very very mixed feelings, mixed thoughts on this book. This book is a novel which follows two friends Frances, who is the protagonist in the sense that um, the story is told from her point of view. And then we have Bobby, who has been her best friend slash lover um, for kind of a long time at the point where we go into the story. So the thing about this novel is I think it's a romance that was written for millennials in the sense that it sort of has all of the elements that millennials like myself tend to like when reading about romance and that would be some things that aren't necessarily traditionally romantic but they are sort of traditionally romantic in our sense in that they call to mind like a lot of the tropes that we saw on television as kids and that's not to say that this is like that in format it's not like it's lit written in a very literary way and there are no quotation marks which is sort of Sally Rooney's oh my god what is the word Bina trademark she writes without um, quotation marks it's beautifully written I have no qualms about that it's very very much something that I enjoy on that level I like the aesthetic, I like the setting, I find the characters fascinating. My main problem with this book is that it seems to do kind of a new thing with an old trope or an old situation that I don't necessarily enjoy or that I don't necessarily think needs to be refreshed, if that makes any sense. So one of the main plot points in this is infidelity. So if that's something that sort of sets you off or triggers you, I definitely would not recommend this book because it does have um, kind of a, hold on, let's be open-minded about this 
uh, take to infidelity, which I don't necessarily like. And I do feel like that relationship that one of the characters has with this married person just isn't the best relationship. I mean, there are parts where you're like, oh, like, yeah, that's cute. But then at the same time, it's like this thing that I feel Sally Rooney has kind of done to death, if that makes sense. And again, this is because I read Normal People, her other novel, first. But I don't know, like that silent, kind of compliant, mysterious guy is just... I'm a little bit sick of it. And I don't really like how this book ended. So yeah, super duper plus plus points for technique, but just some of the things in this really, really irked me. And when I was approaching the end, I remember one of the things that I was thinking was like, it cannot end like this. I will not let it end like this. But of course, it ended like that. Also, sorry, if you can hear voices, uh, my boyfriend is playing <laughs> video games. On to the last book that I'm going to talk about in this short but sweet wrap up. This is Blossoms and Bones by Kim Kranz. So Kim Kranz, for those of you guys who may not be familiar with her work, is an artist that does mostly stuff related to um, esoteric arts and the tarot. So I currently own two of her decks. This is the Wild Unknown Tarot deck and this is the Wild Unknown Archetypes Oracle deck. So yeah. That's a whole other video and maybe a whole other channel that I'll link below if you guys are interested. Um, so this is sort of her graphic autobiography and it talks about a point in her life where she just felt like she had hit rock bottom. Um, at the time, she was coming out of a 12-year marriage and she had just had like a number of miscarriages when she was trying to conceive a baby and when she wanted very badly to have a child. And I will say that it took me some time to kind of acclimate to this book in the sense that there are a lot of pages that just dwell on her kind of not exactly talking about or stating her problem, not really saying what it is that's wrong. And sometimes I can be kind of an impatient reader, but at the same time, something I appreciate is that every page that did that would kind of leave you some clues that would then kind of hook you in and keep you reading. The art style of this is very graphic in the sense that it's all kind of done with ballpoint pen. And it does get a little bit gory sometimes. Um, but then there are times too when it's just super duper cute. It looks like a doodle, but like a very elaborate doodle and a doodle that's very artful. So I do like that style and I do like the black sort of contrasted with all of these beautiful colors. And the storytelling in this was also super duper amazing. <sighs> By the end of it, I was just crying. <laughs> like just crying at 2.30 a.m. And the reason why I'd actually picked this up was because I wanted something kind of chill and laid back to read at night. But it was not so chill, not so laid back, but very, very emotional and very, very beautiful. It's a kind of thing that I think readers from all different kinds of genres can definitely enjoy. And that's it for this reading wrap up. Super duper short but sweet. Um, I will definitely be getting back to you guys with more books in March because I finally sorted out a schedule for myself and I'm just super excited to get on with all of that content. So thank you guys again for watching. Don't forget to like this video if you liked it and subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you next time.